The stage is back. Let's go. You know, sometimes it's the little things in life. It's the little things. How many guys like, I don't even need the big stuff. It's just the little things. I'm thankful. I'm so thankful to be here today. I'm thankful you're here today. Let's give a huge shout out to Blackwater. Let's go, Blackwater. I hear Brian. Brian, we got baptism next Sunday, a week from today, in Blackwater. How many do we have signed up for baptism? We got 66. 66 for baptism. Isn't that awesome? Every week, man, we're getting more and more balcony believers. I see you way up there. Let's go. I see you. That's good to see you guys. Hey, let's give a shout out to Navarre. What's up, Navarre? Want to say welcome to you guys. Glad that you guys came today. And what about our online campus? Hello. A lot of people watching online. Thank you guys for tuning in. And then Pensacola is in the house right here. Let's go. Pensacola. So, you know, they say a communicator ought to always start with an attention grabber. You ought to rest their attention. So I don't know anything better than this. We have grown all summer. That's because you guys keep coming. You keep showing up. You are being faithful. There's something about being faithful to the house of God. How many of you guys know we need, we need more believers and stronger believers? We need more salt. We need more light in this day and time. How many know what I'm talking about? And so Sunday, Sunday is not like where we come and we feast for the rest of the week. Sunday is where we come and we celebrate and we feast for today. And we celebrate everything that God has done, what he's doing today, and what he's gonna do tomorrow. And we come together and we bring people because this world needs Jesus. This world needs Jesus. That's where our hope is. And so you guys have been faithful and it's required it's required. You know, kids just started back to school. I hope y'all had a great week. I know we had some teachers that sent in some stuff and we're getting that to you. And I just want to say thank you again for all that you do. But, but here's the truth. There was a list, right, parents? There was a list of what we needed. Had to have this, had to have that, right? And then I know students love the first couple of days. They sit there, they're bored out of their mind, right? And they're hearing all the, but, but listen, it, there are some things that are required, School supplies required. Behavior, good behavior <laughs> required, right? But did you know that God says it's required of you and I that we are faithful? Now, why is this important? Here's why it's important. Because we got others behind us. And your faithfulness, my faithfulness, our faithfulness becomes a light that is bright, that shows other people the way to go. And so it's required that you and I be found faithful. So I'm glad that you are here today. I feel like preaching today. Do we have anyone here? You're ready for the word of God today? Any believers in the house? Anyone excited? Anyone anticipating? Anybody expectant? Oh yeah. All right, let's keep that, let's keep that energy up today because I, fi- I fix it to talk about your mouth and my mouth. All right, so let me start with this question. When, let me start with this question. When was the last time your mouth got you in trouble? Love y'all. <laughs> it, it, it was like this week, I've been... I've been working out, I've been in the gym. My trainer, for the first time um, in, a, in a little bit, let's just say it like that, in a little bit, we're walking out of the car, made it through a grueling session. I'm walking out, I'm actually walking out of church van. I'm walking out of church van. I'm, I'm just trying to get there. How many just trying to get there sometimes? You know what I'm talking about? I'm just trying to make it, I'm just trying to get there. I'm just putting one foot in front of the other. And, and then all of a sudden comes a dirty little question. So what was the last thing you ate last night? I said, oh, not today. Don't ask me that today. Because preachers, we Christians, we're not supposed to lie. So I lied, and I said, broccoli, steamed broccoli, no butter, absolutely no cheese. No, no, no. 
I said, man, why? I, said, I can't believe you. Your timing. You want to talk about timing being impeccable? Your timing. I said, well, let me tell you. I had a couple blueberries for dinner. I did. And then I had a little protein. I, I said, I actually had some beef jerky. It was the healthy stuff, not the Slim Jim. Snap into a Slim Jim. Yeah, it wasn't that. It was the healthy stuff. And I said, I was doing real good. That was like 6 o'clock because I'm cutting it off at 6. Because my prime time hours are eating like 9, 10, 11. Like, what do we got to eat? And so I said, I was doing real good. And Gavin had football. And then Gavin's like, Dad, can we go to Zaxby's? She said, Some things you don't even got to pray about. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they just feel right. And I said, you know, I, I, I don't know what you want. And he said, well, what about Fusacles is right here across the street? Nine Mile Road. We were getting him certified. Make sure he wasn't 21. Because <laughs> he played guys last year, I swear, were 21. <laughs> like, I'm 11. <laughs> I'm 11. And they had the full goatee, the beard, the whole deal. I'm like, yeah, you lying, bro. You 40. You and I both dying our hair, and I know it. I'm calling that junk out. I'm calling that junk out. And uh, so, anyways, as the Lord... <laughs> Led, we went to Fusacles, and we went to Fusacles, and I'm thinking, stay strong. A couple of blueberries, some protein. You're trying to lose weight. That's a 500 calorie deficit per day to lose a pound in a week. Like, let's go. I, I, I got to do something here. And, and, and then there was a lady there smiling, and um, she wanted to take my order. Not Gavin's order. She has to take my order. And I was like, yes, I'll take, uh, give me four of them fingers and, uh, you know, some fries. And so anyways, so, yeah. Well, it didn't stop there. Because you know it's a slippery slope. My wife comes home with a box, not a little box, with a box of Pepperidge Farm chocolate chip cookies. I come home, and I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself. Though I had a sweet tea first time in two weeks, and I drank all of it, and I got it with no ice, and I got a cup of ice so I could maximize the sweet tea. You know what I'm talking about? I'm thinking about this stuff. <laughs> and and uh, only ate some fries. I didn't eat all the fries. Only ate some fries. And I was like, that's potatoes. That's a vegetable. I'm just confessing. The Bible says confess your faults one to another. You can be healed. I need some healing today. Anybody need some healing today? I'm telling you. I come home, and there's a box with hundreds of cookies. I don't think I'm lying. I said, I see you. Get behind me, Satan. I stayed strong to about 11 o'clock at night. I was laying in bed, couldn't sleep. Just one never happened. It's like a kiss. <laughs> it like lays potato chips. You can't eat just one. I'm laying in bed. I cannot sleep, and I, I don't have a problem with sleeping. I'm laying in bed, and on my mind are those chocolate chip cookies. I'm like, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from calories. For thine is the kingdom. And then I was like, Lord Jesus, forgive me. <laughs> for I know not what I do. And then I read the calories, 140 calories per cookie. So I only had four. I had four. And I was darn proud of myself because I used, I would have chugged 20 ounces of milk and I don't drink the 1%, the 2%. We got married and Steph took her bowl over to the sink because I'm like, we, we do the, the vitamin D, the whole milk, the good stuff. Won't do that water stuff. She turned on the water under the sink with her cereal. And I was like, no! And uh, so I poured like four and a half ounces of milk, just a little bit. And then I poured one more. And, um, and so I cut it off and I laid in bed and I was like, you, you bad, bad boy. You bad boy. And I thought I got away with it. And then the next day I'm walking to the van. You with me? What's the last thing you, I said, well, I didn't have any breakfast. Let's start there. You know, because I'm not eating till 12, 12 to 6, intermittent fasting, that's what I'm doing. I, I, I didn't, he said, no, 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 but I'm just curious, what did you eat last night? Uh-oh. <laughs> I said, man, I can't believe you asked me this. Of all days to be held accountable, I had food sacklings, I had chocolate chip cookies, I didn't eat one. I ate four. I confess, I, your preacher's honest. How about that? He's honest. But 
but I got goals. And I started thinking about this, you know, isn't that how it is with our mouth? Our mouth can get us into trouble, not just by what we put into it. Oh, I feel message coming on. Not, not, just, not just by what we feed it, what we eat, but actually what we say. In fact, I know that it get me in trouble. And, and, you know, I thank God for grace. My trainer gave me grace. He's like, that's okay. You get back on, you know, and uh, get back on, get the focus. Oh, yes, 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 sir, yes, sir. So we get back on. And, and he said, you just can't, you can't do that all the time. Not if you want to make the gains that you want. I'm like, roger that. And, and, and I think sometimes for you and I, if, if we're honest, our mouth gets us in trouble. Anybody? If you, <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. If, if you know somebody whose mouth sometimes gets them in trouble, it's me. It's, I can't see you, but God bless you where, wherever you are. If, if you know somebody like that, just, you know, just give them a little wink. Don't embarrass them. Don't point to them. Just give them a little, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the truth, I can't see y'all, so y'all are perfect in my eyes. I can't, I can't see who's who. The, perf, the truth is, none of us are perfect. And the truth is, sometimes our mouth just gets us in trouble. Boy, I tell you what. We got to realize the power of the tongue. In just a minute, we're going to read James. James, the half-brother of Jesus. We're going to read what James says. But I want you to listen to this verse. Listen to this verse. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life. And so today's message isn't just about death. It's also about life. Some of us, when we think about mouth, we just think about the negative, the things we say, we shouldn't say. Maybe you're negative, maybe you're complaining, maybe you gripe, maybe you lie, maybe you gossip, maybe you say some things you shouldn't say. Um, but the, the truth is, your mouth can be used by God. It was created by God, and your mouth can be used for God, but, but not only can we use our mouth for God, the truth is your mouth can create a better life for you, for your marriage, for your children, for your business. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Can we just memorize that together? Would you say it with me? Death and life are in the power of the, of the tongue. And then it says this, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Imagine a beautiful fruit tree. Did you take care of this fruit tree? And I, I don't know what kind of fruit tree you would want in your yard if you could have any fruit tree. I'll tell you what, but when I went to Seattle and started eating some cherries from out there, I was like, oh, right there. That is amazing. The picture here is that you do have a tree and you do have a tree of life and if you will control your tongue, if you'll watch your tongue, if you'll choose how you use, woo, that's good right there. If you will choose how you use your tongue, that actually will determine if your life is gonna be good or gonna go bad. In fact, in just a minute, in James, James says that every wrong thing in your life is actually connected back to your tongue. My God, I heard about this old country preacher. He's a preacher in Texas. He was preaching the gospel. Boy, he was preaching. And today he was preaching on the tongue. He's preaching. He's like, some of y'all, I'm telling you what, you need to get right with God. I'm telling you, your blessings flow out of your mouth, and yet you curse men. Some of you need to get right. And say that they had this, uh, this old lady who always gave him problems. She's always stirring up trouble. She was always complaining, always negative, always just meh. I mean, and, you know, he would pray she didn't come to church. You know, some people, you pray they don't. No, no, no. And, 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 and she was there that, and he's like, oh, I'm going to preach this message. And he was preaching, preaching, preaching so hard. He's preaching this message. And she came under conviction. You ever come under conviction? You know what I'm talking I have. In fact, when I study, I come under conviction. When I pray, I come under conviction. And conviction is a good thing. It's a spiritual shower. That's a great thing. 
if you're not convicted, that means you're far from God and, and you've got some layers built up. It's kind of like if you didn't brush your teeth, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? i would be like uh, the stars, they come out at night. If you, uh, if you just let it build up, you would have all kinds of plaque, tartar. I mean, you'd have bad breath. It'd, it'd be bad. If we, don't, if we don't keep short accounts with God, that's what happens. We got to keep short accounts with God. Well, this lady came under conviction, and she came forward, and she said, Pastor, forgive me, I'm I'm under conviction. I just want to put my tongue on this altar. And he said, God bless you, sister. You can go back to your seat. Our altar's not that big. You can, you just go, you just go back on. I mean, her, her tongue, she was known for the negative. I want to ask you a question. Are you known for the negative? When people see you, are they scared to ask how you're doing? Because you're really going to tell them? <laughs> that was, like, it, it, it's, it's good to be honest. I'm not saying walk around and say praise the Lord when everything, you know, like that's good. But if they say, how's everything going? Everything's per- Don't lie. Don't lie. But I'm saying also don't be the kind of person that the truth is. You're just always negative. There are some people, and we talked about this last week, so I'm going to dwell here too much, but there are some people that you speak negativity so much that your future isn't bright. And, and, and in, a, in a few weeks, we're going to be talking about something even, even maybe as important as the tongue, and that's the mind. Because the tongue just spits out what's in the mind. You know, some people that drink a little too much, and then they talk a little too much. How many of you want to be around those people? It's like, what's in your heart? Oh, here we go. What are they going to say now? (laughs) Am I I telling the truth? I'm not talking about this church, church down the road. But (laughs) the truth is your tongue cannot just be a bad thing. God can use it for a great thing. He can use it for a great thing. I love the NLT, and this convicts me. I speak for a living. It's what I do. But listen to this. The tongue can bring death or life, NLT, Proverbs 18, 21. And it says this. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Did you ever say the wrong thing at the wrong time? Wish you could take it back. We can't take words back, can we? We can't. And we're not God. God can forgive and forget because he chooses to do so, but we don't forget, do we? We don't. So Proverbs 18, 21, say it with me. Death and life are in the of the, if we left today with that, I could change a whole lot. I could change a whole lot, but that's not the rest of my message. So let's go to James. Let's go James chapter three, verse two. Yes, indeed, we all make many mistakes. If you make a lot of mistakes, raise your hand. Listen, one of the greatest things I can tell you is don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of failure. Failure can be your friend because failure doesn't have to be final if you will fail forward. I want to fail. I want to fail. I want to fail every day. I want to fail fast because the the faster I fail, the more I learn. And I'm going to fail forward, not backwards. And so sometimes we're so scared of failure. We're so scared of mistakes. Oh, oh, oh. We're our kids. And sometimes we're so scared they're going to make a mistake that we hover. We hover too much. We control too much. Don't raise your hand. How many like to control? Me too. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, we'll create a fear in our kids that they're fearful to make a mistake. That's how you learn. That's how you learn to walk. That's how I learned to walk. Thank God when I got back up and took a step, people clapped. Otherwise, I might still be on the ground. How you do this thing again? Thank God that God, when we fall down, he's there to encourage us. He's there to pray for us. He's there to inspire us. He's there to reach out his hand like Peter realized that the hand was closer than he thought. And he not only will stretch out his hand, he will lift you up. He'll lift you up. He'll lift you up. So we make many mistakes. If you made some mistakes this last week, say, me too. For if we could control, for if, this is conditional, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. And a small rudder 
How many of you have a boat? Raise your hand. Steph, turn around. Start writing these names down. Let's, we, we, we're looking, uh, looking for some new friends here. And a small rudder. What? Makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go. Even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing. Someone say small thing. Turn to the person beside you and say, better watch your mouth. Hey, uh, hey that, it's time to take an offering right now. Some of your prayers just got answered. You're like, we can leave now, pastor. Some things only come by prayer and fasting. I just got to say some words I've been wanting to. Hey, turn back to that person. You just told them, watch your mouth. Look at them and say, I told you. I told you, watch your mouth. Watch this. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. You ever seen road rage? It's not the time for confession. I don't want to know. You ever seen road rage? And you're like, how did they get there? It's like a fire. How many of y'all watched a video like that where it started out road rage and then someone gets out of the car? Come on, be honest. How many of y'all, you were scrolling. <laughs> You're like, yeah, no, okay, don't hold your hand up. Leave me, leave me stranded, that's fine. <laughs> and you wonder like, how did it get to that point? It's kind of like the things that we say sometimes. How did it, how, how, how did, how did it get to that point if we're not careful? This, this tongue, this small thing can do big damage. Big damage. Mark eleven twenty three, 23, but it's not only a negative thing, it's a positive thing. Mark eleven twenty three 23 talks about what we talked about last week. I don't think I read this reference, but it says, truly I say to you, whatever, or who, excuse me, whoever says to this mountain be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, that's key, doesn't doubt. James would also back him up. James chapter one would say, don't doubt. So, but doesn't doubt. And how many of you, how many of you would be honest? You doubt. I doubt. Peter doubted. We all doubt. And yet God would say to you today, don't doubt. So, so whoever says to this mountain, what's your mountain? That was last week, the message, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass. It will be done for him. There's a scripture verse that says when we pray, believe that God's answered the prayer because God is going to answer the prayer. And it might be a little bit different than what you wanted, but it will always be for your good. Always be for your good. Because Romans says 826, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to God's purpose. Found out this week that one of our friends who had been in the market shopping for a house, we were praying for them to get this house. They found the house. They were gonna get this house and they were gonna be able to get it at the same interest rate where it was and they thought it, this whole thing was gonna work out, looked like awesome, looked amazing. And um, we were praying and we were giving God glory for a prayer he wasn't gonna answer. We said, man, God, let's go, let's go. And then all of a sudden the deal fell through fell through. We're like, oh man. And then they got a higher interest rate. Much higher. A little bit higher. Somewhere between there. Oh man. But it's like same house, same model, same neighborhood. I was like, man, we were believing God for that. And then we found out last week, you remember the lightning storm? You remember that last week? Was it last week, two weeks ago, something like that? Last week? Remember that? I mean, it was just like, holy cow, right? It's crazy. Lightning struck that house. By the way, they just moved in, I don't know, a month and a half ago, I'm guessing. Had God answered that prayer, they'd have been in that house. And it, it didn't just hit it, it like... So sometimes when we, we can believe that God's gonna answer the prayer, and what we need to believe is that God has my best interest at heart. God, God is working things out for my good. God is working things out for his glory. God can be trusted. And when I can't see his heart, I'll hold on to his hand. And when I can't feel like, I, I don't know, God, where your hand is, I'm going to trust his heart. I'm going to trust his heart. 
I love this passage. It says this, Proverbs 13, three, those who control their tongue will have a long life. Controlling the tongue. And then James says, nobody can control it. So it's a work in progress. I want my tongue to heal, not to hurt. I want my tongue to inspire, not make people perspire. I want my tongue to lift people up, not kick them when they're down. I want my tongue to speak things that are true about people that they, I, they may, I may not even be able to see it or sense it except for the Holy Spirit, but they may be having a battle. They may be struggling with something and I want the words of my mouth to speak. I want it to come over them like a healing balm of Gilead. That's the power of the tongue. And if you control your tongue, you're gonna have a long life. Who wants a long life? So what that means is I can't say everything I wanna say. Somebody say application. And if you're married and you have kids and they're out of the house, no matter how old they are, you feel me. If you're a grandparent, you understand. There's some things that you want to say to your kids and you're like, I'm saying that. Because if I say that, it'll ruin the relationship. Can I get a? It's true. There's some things, right? And timing is everything. And I'm not talking about holding back. I'm not talking about being a scaredy cat. I'm I'm not even trying to rhyme. It's just coming. I'm I'm telling you that there's some things that you better check with God before they come out of your mouth. Because as soon as they leave, you can't retrieve. You can't get them back. You'll never get those words back. So God help us. Those who control their tongue will have a long life. (laughs) Proverbs 13, three here. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. (laughs) How many been there? Can we just confess just just right here? How many been there before? Uh, Turn to that same person that you were judging earlier. Turn to that person and say, I've been there too. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not judging you anymore. Lord just reminded me of the beam in my own eye. Proverbs 21, 23, watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and you'll stay out of trouble. Now, that's great advice when we give it to our kids, right? Sometimes kids push you to the edge. They keep doing, keep, and you're like, you got all these facial gymnastics going. You're so angry, your face like, whoosh, it's popping like popcorn. And veins are, and then you're like, watch your mouth. <laughs> and if they preached us the same message, What'd you say? <laughs> Boy, you better check yourself or you wreck yourself. How many know what I'm talking about? Isn't it something we all struggle with? It's something we all struggle with. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. It doesn't got to go negative. This doesn't have to be a sermon about just, hey, hey, quit being negative and quit. You. This whole thing can change your life. It can, it can literally be a rudder that changes the direction of your life, and I love that in James, how he reminds us of that. You see, your tongue is like a steering wheel. Your tongue will determine the direction of your life. Your tongue will. Your tongue will. And sometimes we blame and point fingers and this and that, and if he wouldn't have, and that wouldn't have happened, and then this, and, and, and so some of us need to go from making excuses to go to making moves. And the first move is, Lord, set a watch before my mouth. And if anyone struggled with this, I'm right there because I'm an eight on the Enneagram. I know what to say. I say it three different ways. Anybody? I feel y'all judging me today. I felt I had good humor. No, if I'm not careful, sometimes I can be so direct And direct's not a bad thing. Clarity is a beautiful thing. But I gotta watch my mouth. And and I can't do it because I can't control it. So I actually, I actually have to outsource the control of my mouth to a higher power. I gotta turn it over. 
I gotta say, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew in me a right mindset. And may the words of my mouth, may the words of my mouth, the words of my mouth, Every day we ought to look back at our day before the sun sets and we ought to do inventory of the words of our mouth. And where we messed up, we need to fess up to God. And then if we wronged somebody else, we need to go to somebody else. Well, God already forgave me. It's under the blood and we're done. but death and life is in the power of the tongue. Sometimes the greatest things you can say is I was... <laughs> Let me try it again, I apologize. I was, <laughs> I was wrong. You were too, no don't say that. We talk about not saying everything you're thinking. I was wrong, period, not comma. <laughs> I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And that's who y'all are. That's who you are. That's why your future's so bright. Because just like water always seeks the lowest point, so the Spirit of God always descends on the humble. God gives grace to the humble. So therefore, humble yourselves under the almighty hand of God, that he may lift you up. Amen. I feel him. He's here. <laughs> we were in Orlando, and my daughter, um, Riley, wanted to do Terror of Tower. Is that, what was the name of it? I don't know. I'm so old, I've seen several of these, and they rename them everything. What was it? Drop Tower. And I got an issue with drop tower. Let me explain. What's the first word? So you would think drop is where the excitement was. No. It was in the acceleration. I'm getting ready to see beautiful Orlando at Universal. And I'm like, all right, some things you do for love. I'm like, let's go. I've done this. Let's go. Some of y'all know you... Uh, went to Six Flags in Georgia a long time ago. <laughs> we won't say how long. Um, but, but, but you got in, there was a little cage door, and it shot you up. We'd put a quarter on the knee, and we'd watch it float. And then Six Flags took it to the next level, and they did the thing where you strap in, they shoot you up, and you're going around and around, all the way up to the top, and then something stupid happens. <laughs> they put you at a 45-degree angle, as if you weren't screaming, Jesus, loud enough. And then some 14-year-old kid for his first job is like. <laughs> ah! That was awesome. Not drop tower. Drop tower shot you up. I'm looking at him like this foot. Ah! We going all the way up. And then it started, you know, bouncing and doing this thing, but. It was a heck of a view. It shocked me. I was expecting something different. I wonder if there are people here today that you're expecting something and it's really about the words that come out of your mouth. It's about the things that you say. I believe there's some people sick because they, not everybody, please don't judge me, just hear me out. I think there's some people sick because they just speak it. I feel a cold coming on. I swear I'm going to have a headache by the end of the day. Yep. But, but, but what, if we could, what if we could flip this whole thing and what if your tongue that will control the direction that will direct your life, what if we could flip it and what if your future could be better because you started being more intentional? And this is how I want to close. This is how I do this. By the way, Scripture says, let the weak say I'm strong. I don't always feel strong. Do you always feel strong? If you do, I want to meet you. 
I got a Bible I want you to sign. Um, by the way, the title of this message was Tongue Torch. And sometimes when we talk about the tongue, we think we're going to burn everything down. But the truth is that we could light it up. We, 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 we could light it up. We could flip the whole thing. And I want, to, I want to show you just what I do here. And I call these my daily positive confessions. And there's a preacher who's helped me with this. His name's Joel Olstein. Some of you have used your tongue against him, maybe. I don't know. But God gave him a gift of encouragement. And when he speaks, I always feel the Spirit of God encouraging me. Now, if you want a God that is irate and mad and angry all day, every day at you, go for it. That's not my Jesus. And when I got my Camaro in 2015, got Sirius XM radio for the first time, I found this station, and every time I drive my car, past tense, I listen to his messages. Fixing to be future tense. See what I did there? It's all how you speak about it. And one of the things that he helped me is the power of your tongue speaking things out. But, but God, I don't feel strong. God, I don't feel brave. God, I don't feel full of faith. Let the weak say, I'm strong. God, I don't feel courageous. God, I don't feel skinny. Let the overweight say, I am slim. We laugh, and it it's funny. But start looking yourself in the mirror and say, I am a masterpiece. I am a child of the Most High God. I am not a liar. My name's Israel. Whew. See, God renamed Jacob because his name meant deceit. And God said, we got to change your name. Because every time someone calls your name, they're predicting your future. And the future, my God, I feel you right now. And your future is different than what you've been thinking it is. So these are my daily confessions. Our friend, Pastor Nicole, says, wake, pray, slay. And today it hit me, wake, pray, say, slay. Because a part of my quiet time is I got to say this stuff. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the weak say I am strong mountain in your way you're praying about the mountain I hear you why don't you start speaking to the mountain why don't you stop talking and speaking about the mountain why don't you start commanding the mountain in the authority of Jesus to move so I wake pray say slay Mark eleven twenty three 23 says I'll have whatever I say you can believe it or not I'm going to go with God so there are some things in my life where the enemy ruined it. There's some things in my life that sometimes, you know, you get yourself in trouble and then sometimes that's just the plain devil. But I'm telling you, I'm taking it back. I'm claiming it back. I'm saying, yeah, some of the stuff that happened in 2020, you know what? No, 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 that's not gonna be a period. That's not where the history is gonna end. It's actually gonna change and it's gonna be a little bit different. Maybe the business that you lost, Maybe the friend that all of a sudden, you're not speaking. The, the son, the daughter, y'all on bad terms. What, what if you started speaking that in Jesus' name, this will happen? In Jesus' name, this will happen. You see, my thoughts, I think, and the words I say, they will determine my tomorrow. So here's what I say. I am blessed. I am blessed. And by the way, sometimes you're going to have to say this when you don't feel like it. You're going to have to say it when you feel like you, you, you are lying through your teeth. You still need to say it. And you need to speak it out loud. In fact, Romans tells us if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. There are some things when you speak it, it makes hell tremble. It's one thing to think it. It's another thing to say it. 
I found out when I started to speak my fears out loud, they started shrinking. I started hearing them screaming. That demonic spirit of fear started screaming, I'm shrinking, I'm melting. I'm like, yes, you are in Jesus' name because I'm strong. I'm blessed. I am forgiven. I'm redeemed. I'm loved. I'm accepted. I'm approved. And some of y'all, like right there is what you needed today. You don't think you're loved. You can't accept yourself. Why would anyone else? And God says, I accept you. I see you. I want you. And I love you. And surely my goodness and mercy is coming for you. I'm loved, accepted, and approved. I'm free. I'm free from sickness, from poverty, from lack, and every kind of bondage or stronghold. In Jesus' name, I'm free. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And if you know the truth, the truth will set you. So I am free because I know the truth. I got on my knees and spoke with them this morning. I'm secure and confident. I'm wise, I'm intelligent, I'm creative, I'm focused, and I'm disciplined. And it's funny how when I start saying those things, eight cookies went to four. I just got some of y'all back. Welcome to the after party. I'm successful, I'm talented, I'm anointed, and I don't take it for granted. I'm prosperous and healthy. I'm strong. I'm brave and I am bold. The righteous will be as bold as a lion. Ain't no lion need a guard dog. Ain't no lion got a pit bull or a Rottweiler in front protecting him at night. Because the righteous are as bold as a lion. A lion said, who's on my property? Who's trying to take my ground? I'm bold. I'm courageous, victorious. I'm full of them vigor, vitality, energy, and strength. Instead of saying, my God, I'm so tired. It's only one o'clock. Well, if you say it every day, guess what? Your body is going to be tired every day at one o'clock. We got cars now, and you can program what time the car is going to depart. And your body is way more intricate than that electric car. What you say leads the way. So reclaim the day and watch your mouth and what you say. I say, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm God's masterpiece created in his image and likeness. Watch out college sports. This is the real NIL. I got his name. I was made in his image and created in his likeness. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4, 13. In all things, I'm more than a conqueror, Romans 8, 37. I am a child of the Most High God. Sometimes I want to say it twice and extra loud just so the devil got to hear it again. I am a child of the Most High God. By the way, the devil tempted Jesus. Remember that? Jesus was led of the Spirit. Matthew's Gospel tells us he was led to be tempted. Right before he was tempted, he was baptized. When he was baptized, we see a picture of the Trinity. We see Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Son's in the water, getting baptized, not because that's what gets you to heaven. He's getting baptized because he is our example. He was getting baptized as an example. Repent of your sins and be baptized. Well, he's in the water. Father God speaks and says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And the Spirit of God, here it is, Holy Trinity, Spirit of God comes down like a dove and rests upon him. And he has this most amazing, glorious time. And he comes out of the water. You know, now we do baptism. It says, you know, um, you know, all kinds of creative stuff on the T-shirts. Jesus walked out. Spirit of God was upon him. And the Spirit of God led him to the wilderness. You're in the wilderness, maybe that's exactly where God wants you. Maybe it's not a curse. Maybe it's actually proving to you that you're stronger than you thought you were. Because you're gonna need to know you have that strength for the next mountain ahead of you. And the devil comes and tries to talk Jesus out of being the son of God. If you're the son of God. If God Almighty just said, 
Father God just said, this is my son. And so if he tried to get Jesus to doubt his sonship, I promise you he will come after your sonship. He'll come after you being a daughter of God. And sometimes it's just good to say, it's just good to hear, it's just good for the enemy to hear, I am a child of the most high God. Oh, I got a few more. I got a few more. God's goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. Psalm 23, verse 6. God's favor surrounds me like a shield. Psalm 512. I love this one. God always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. That means all I do is win, win, win. No matter what, what, what. God always causes me to triumph. I'm already in the winner's circle. I read the back of the book, baby, and we win. I'm on the winning team. We walk in with a trophy. We're going to have an after party like nobody has ever partied. God's goodness and mercy. I said that one. God has plans to prosper me, to give me a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. My path is like the shining sun, shining brighter and brighter until the full day. Proverbs 4, 18. How about this one? It's my season. I'm preparing to prosper. Psalm 1, 3. God is perfecting everything that concerns me. God's working on everything that affects me, everything that concerns me. God is perfecting it. Psalm 138, verse 8. How about that promise? Well, if you started speaking that promise over your life, right before the board meeting, right before the presentation, right before the exam, right before the tryout, God is perfecting everything in my life. I'm going from glory to glory. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. Psalm 138, verse 8. I believe this. I believe it so much. This last year I got a watch and I put on the back of the watch, get the light just right. The time of the Lord's favor has come. Luke 4, 19. And I started speaking that. I started speaking that. And you know what? Doors started opening for me. They started opening. Literally right after I opened that, or sorry, right after I got that written on there, every time I put on my watch, I would speak it. I would speak it. And massive doors, God began to open. Why? Because the power of death and life is in the tongue. So choose life. Realize that your tongue is like a tree, a fruit tree. And it can do a lot of good or it can cause things to wither and die. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? How many would say, Pastor Tim, you'd say, you know what, I'm going to start talking different. I'm going to watch my mouth. I'm going to start choosing life instead of death. I'm going to watch my mouth. And if that's you, would you raise your hand in the presence of a holy God? Would you say, this message was for me? And it can mean all kinds of things. To hold it up to God. God, some of you maybe, maybe you just want to turn it up. You're not a negative person. You're a pretty positive person. But you're just going to be more intentional person. You're going to declare God's goodness, God's promises, God's word over your life. Raise a hand. I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. I'm going to pray for those raising your hands so have the courage to lift it. Don't, don't listen to the lie of the devil. Oh, people are going to be looking. People are going to be judging. Listen, there are no perfect people allowed at this church. That's why I get to be the pastor. So raise that hand. Jesus, all our hands, my hands in the air, God. Lord, we ask you to help us. God, may we leverage the power of the tongue to bring life, to speak life, to increase life. God, may our words heal and not hurt. May our words help and not harm. May our words encourage and not discourage. God, may we realize the opportunity we have to declare things that are even not yet true, but we declare them as if they are true because it is by faith that we declare and speak to the mountain to move. God, thank you for 
teaching us that our tongue determines the direction of our life. It's like that little rudder. Every time people get in their boat, every time we get in our car, every time we touch the steering wheel, God, may that be a check. May that be a safety check of how's our tongue. And have we allowed the Holy Spirit to put a watch before our mouth, a guard, a filter, so that the things we say can win the day. Prayed in Jesus' name with heads bowed and eyes closed. Proud of you for being honest. Hey, we don't come here just to inform. We come here to transform. We don't come here just for information. We come here for transformation. And so how do we change our life by listening to the word of God and living it out? Would you live it out? That person you've been wanting to tell off, give them mercy person you've been wanting to cuss out give them kindness that person that you know needs encouragement they probably need triple encouragement speak life speak life speak life you can put your hands down now with heads bowed and eyes closed we never like to end a gathering I said we never like to end a gathering without giving you an opportunity to put your faith and trust in Jesus Sin is the worst thing in the world because it's deceiving. Sin looks sexy and yet it kills. Sin will flirt with you. Sin will make you feel good. Sin will be the life of the party. The problem is it's a short party. And then the very thing that promised you the world will begin to steal your soul. And if you're here and you're not a Christian, you're a sinner. Because there are only two types of people here today, saints and sinners. The cool thing is that Jesus loves you enough that Jesus, who is the ultimate saint, actually became a sinner so that you could become a saint. He took your place. He died on a cross because you and I are sinners by birth and sinners by nature and sinners by choice. And on that cross, Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them. And he was talking about you. And he was talking about me. He was asking his Father to forgive us of our sins because we did not, we could not fully grasp the danger. Of our sin. Because sin leads to death physically and spiritually and the soul that sins will die so on that cross Jesus cried and he said Father forgive them and then one of the last things he says is it is finished on that cross Almighty God paid the price that Almighty God required for sin to be paid for God in the flesh Jesus on the cross literally absorbed all of the punishment, all of the pain, all of the stain and the stench of sin, and he did it. He literally absorbed the wrath of Almighty God because sin's got to be punished. And Jesus did that for you so that you and I, so needy, so helpless in and of ourselves, could receive the love of God that picks us up and washes us and makes us right with God and gives us a new name and gives us a hope and gives us a future. And grace, grace, God's riches at Christ's expense is presented to you this day. Choose grace. If you've never turned from your sin to Jesus, the Savior, my prayer is you do it today. Blackwater, my prayer is you do it today. Well, you're a tough guy. Let me tell you something. Ain't no tough guys in hell. Just people full of regrets and wishes and dreams that will never come true. And as simple as a drop of water. And if you're here today and you've been playing around, you, you've just been kind of like, ah, you know, we'll see. I don't know. Today is the day of salvation. And I declare today is your day of salvation. Today's your day. You got here, Satan did everything to try to keep you from coming, but you made it. You know why I didn't want you to come? For this moment, for this invitation, 
for this opportunity for you to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and to believe that he died and he rose again for you because that's how a person gets to heaven. Not by going to church, not by having 35 Bibles, not by having the Lord's Prayer in your house, not by being a part of a certain denomination. You come to Christ with the faith of a child and you humble yourself and you ask for something you could never earn and you receive something you never deserved. It is a beautiful thing. It is called salvation and it is here and it's for the taking and all you got to do is receive it. For as many as received him, Jesus, he gives them the right to become the sons and the daughters of God. So today, I want you to reach out. I want you to accept the love of God. Well, I don't deserve it, Pastor Tim. I don't feel like I deserve it, Pastor Tim. I got a lot to change, Pastor Tim. I got a lot of questions, Pastor Tim. I got a lot of fears. I got a lot of unbelief, Pastor Tim. That's all right. You come as you are. God will take you just as you are. You know how I know it? Because he took me just as I am. He'll do the same for you. I feel you. I feel the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God in this place. Now, God, through technology in Navarre, in Blackwater, people watching around the world here in Pensacola, God, I pray that today people will lift up their voice and ask you to come into their life and to forgive them of their sin, to make them new and teach them how to live. Give them the courage, God, I pray today. In Jesus' name, with heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. You pray your own prayer. You don't have to pray this prayer, but you can. It's just kind of like a self, uh, self prayer, self starter. This just kind of help help you, and and it's fine. And how we do it here is we pray it together, out loud, all together, because we know as Christians, you you're you're born again one time. So the reason why we would say this is so you don't say it by yourself, so the devil doesn't punk you out, so you don't have the best thing in front of you and decide not to take it. There's no judgment here. We're cheering for you. Red Rover, Red Rover, let some sinners come over today in Jesus' name. Would you pray with me? Don't hesitate. I want you to pray with me out loud. Would you repeat after me? Jesus, I am a sinner. Now pause right there and tell them quietly in your heart what kind of sinner you are. What's that sin that always kicked your tail? What's that sin you always go back to? Tell them. Now repeat after me. I'm a sinner and I need a savior but I feel your love today and I receive your love today. Thank you for loving me, bleeding for me, dying for me, rising again on the third day for me. Thank you. I now declare Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And Jesus, I give you my life. I receive your life. Now teach me how to live in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Here's the the really cool thing. Raising your hand doesn't save you. Right now, there are names being added to the, what's called the Lamb's Book of Life. That's the book in heaven. It's the book. There's like the Bible and there's like the book. And if your name's in it, you get in. If it's not, it's not a good day. The cool thing is when you cry out to Jesus, and ask him to save you, wash away your sins. Here's what happens. Your name gets written in that book. Nothing, not even you, not even your sin, not even your backsliding can erase it. Isn't that good news? That's really good news. So today we want to celebrate who is here and who actually today, you took that step of faith. You said, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I want to be a saint. If you did that today on the count of three, I want you to hold the hand up. We're going to clap. Navar, I want you to hold it up high. Yes, sir. I want you to hold it up. Ma'am, hold it up. Blackwater, I want you to hold it up. You're watching online. You'll see a verse on the screen or you're in the chat right now. Let us know. Jesus made me new. Would you say that? Text that to us. Jesus made me new. Text that. Let us know. You're here in Pensacola. How we know is you raise your hand. And the purpose for this is because this is your starting point, not the finishing line. The purpose of this is we want to clap because you are winning. You've won. You're now a child of God. So we want to give you some resources that will help you grow, develop your new relationship with God. 
We have blue bags. You raise your hand, you're going to get one. Don't let that keep you from getting one. It's worth it. I promise you. On the count of three, hold your hand up. Hold it up high. Don't be shy. I already see hands in the air. We haven't got to one yet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One, two, three right now. Hold it up. Let's go. Hold it up in the balcony. Hold it up, Navar. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Absolutely incredible.